You already know what time it is. Welcome to Bracketology presented by Coors Light. All 68 teams know that they'll be playing in March and we're going to talk about all of them, each and every one. Christine Williamson here alongside Sam Ravitch. We got Harry Lyles Jr. here and King McClure fresh yes. off of a plane. Fresh <laughs> off the plane. Make it. I almost did. I made it by the grace of God. Yeah. Because I, I, my, my bags, I have no clothes. Guys. Yeah. You made a pit so, stop, though, didn't So right. this, is, this is a $30 outfit from Target, shirt about 15 pants maybe about like $20, $20 cargoes. So it's probably like a $35 outfit from Target. We're so I proud do. of you. I, I have to I have, like tap into my inner Christine in order yeah, to yeah. Make, <laughs> make that I work. go shopping at Target all the time, but I do want to ask you, where are your bags currently? Oh, I don't know. But based off the recent text I got, they said we have not located your luggage. Okay. Now, it was in Kansas like, City. You will never see that luggage again. No, that, wow. don't, don't, do not put That's that gone. bad juju it's in gone. the air. What did you fly? <laughs> I, I flew. I had to. Fly, I was gonna fly American originally, but in order to get here on time, I had to fly United. That's the problem. Mm. American? Amen. We, no. American of, and United. That's the problem. Delta would never. Right. Right. That's some of us. Delta would literally <laughs> never. Um, okay. So as I mentioned, we now know all 68 teams that will be playing in March. Uh, what are your initial thoughts, guys, when you look at the bracket, Sam? Uh, a couple of snubs. Uh, I'll speak for the Big East here. I think uh, getting three teams into the Big East, mm. um, they should have had more. Uh, considering what they've been able to do, and some consider the second or third best conference, I think, in basketball. Um, Seton Hall, a team who beat UConn earlier this year, left out. St. John's, who scored more points than anybody did against UConn in the Big East uh, tournament, left out. And Providence, who you know lost a, a key player in Bryce Hopkins this year, um, left out. I, I just I, I don't see this as a three bid league, but uh, nevertheless, uh, UConn, you know, still probably a favorite, I think, to yeah. win it all this year. Yeah. I, look for me. If we're talking about teams that, that got in, a team that got in and a team that didn't get in, I don't like that we put Virginia in and Indiana State is not in. <laughs> there it is. Be and, and look, it, it like, it's, it's, this is very like plain for me, right? And obviously, yeah. like I was, I was caping for Indiana State yesterday on our show. Like to put Virginia in and their style of play and just... <laughs> don't nobody want to watch how that! How much of a <laughs> snoozer it is. When you could have had Indiana State, who has great guard play. 100%. And then, of course, Robbie Avila, like who would have been a star in this tournament. I Electric, just, yeah. I'm just very upset that we could not mm -hmm. just change that. Everything else, like, I'm cool with, man. Like, I, I usually don't like to, you know, pick and choose here mm -hmm. and there, whatever. But, like, that's one this year I was like, darn, upset about that. Uh, for me this year, it's the year of the guards, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm a big believer that in order to have success in March, you have to have good guard play, okay? It's not the year of the big man, not the year of the forwards. It's the year of the guard. Mm -hmm. So I will strictly be picking my bracket, picking, making my <laughs> picks based off who has the better backcourt. Because oh, like if your backcourt is better, I think you got a chance. Okay. So that will be my consensus theme amongst this whole hour. Okay, uh, that's a really good tip. We'll talk about some more tips for your bracket later in the show. But let's start by looking at the bracket mm. as a whole. And we're going to start in the East region where UConn, the defending champs, reside. Now... This is a pretty stacked region when you look at it. Outside of UConn, there's three other major conference champs in this region. Um, do you think that this is the most stacked region, Sam? I think so, yeah. But but I don't think it's the most stacked region that we've seen in like 10 years. Okay. Look yeah. at what UConn did last year. I mean, they had to go through St. Mary's, Arkansas, Gonzaga, Miami. Those were all top 25 teams. But yeah, I mean, obviously you look at this up and down. You got the Big 12 champ. You got the Big 10 champ. You got UConn, who just won the Big East, right? Yep. This is a, uh, a dangerous, dangerous uh, side of the bracket. Um, but, I, again, I don't, I don't think it's anything that UConn hasn't been able to deal with mm -hmm. before, so I don't want to overlook it that way. Um, this is a better UConn team than they were last year. I think they are deeper. Mm -hmm. um, Ooh, better. I, 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 I think take, they are. I think a little spicy. I think they are better than they were last year. Their offense certainly um, is clicking on a uh, much higher level. Um, I think Donovan Klingon, what he's been able to do this mm -hmm. year has been tremendous. And you talk about backcourts, right? Yeah. Tristan Newton, Cam Spencer, who may be outside mm -hmm. of Dalton Connect, like the best impact transfer this year. So yeah. I, I think this is a better UConn team. And I don't, I don't really think that they should have a ton of trouble on this side of the bracket. It's very interesting, though, because you think about the number one overall seed, you expect their region not to be the toughest region, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But I do want to ask you, Harry, who do you think the biggest threat is to UConn as they obviously hope to go back-to-back -back and winning a national championship? I mean, we were sitting there yesterday watching Iowa State mm -hmm. beat Houston by four mm -hmm. touchdowns. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, that, that to me, like, when that team decides that they want to yeah. be great, like, they are truly great. But, I mean, again, like Sam, we were sitting there watching this election show – 
and being like, does the committee have it out for UConn? Cause, sure I feels mean, like it, yeah. FAU in the second round. They could yeah. play Auburn in the Sweet 16. They could play Iowa State in the Elite Eight. And even, like, let's say Washington State is a great story this year. Drake, Missouri Valley Conference winner, BYU, yeah. another team, when they decide that they want to be great, can be great. UAB finished really strong this year. So I, I think out of all of those teams, Iowa State is the one that I would be afraid of if I was UConn. Yeah, yeah. But, again, it, to me, you could look at this side of the bracket – and be like, okay, I could see how UConn gets through it clean, but I could also see if one team plays their absolute best game, and you know, typically it has taken yeah. 50% or better shooting from three to beat UConn this year. That is literally what it's taking. Mm-hmm. But you could look at these teams and say, okay, like you could really make a case for anybody. Yeah, yeah. but let's not sleep on this second round potential matchup. Okay. Right? I mean, FAU has. Let's yeah. say FAU gets past Northwestern. Uh-huh. Not won't be easy, but let's say they do. FAU is a team who's been there. Okay. Mm-hmm. But they didn't have the same level of success that we saw in last year's season. They didn't dominate uh, the American like we expected them to. They had a good year, but not a great year. Mm -hmm. But I still think my consensus thing, when it comes to backcourts, you look at a dude like John L. Jones, Mm -hmm. he might be one of the best guards on the floor. It's probably him and Tristan Newton who were the best guards on that floor. So I think you can give them a chance. And they have – why are you looking at me like that? Because I'm thinking about the next question that I'm about to ask you. Go on. (laughs) They they have a chance to upset UConn in the second round. Okay, that's what I was going to ask you. I was going to say, so if they beat Northwestern, you think that FAU could beat UConn? If they get hot, I think they have a chance. Okay. I'm not going to just ride ride them off, but I think that FAU is capable enough, they get hot enough, to where they can potentially give UConn fits. I'm not – I'm going to choose UConn, though. Make that clear. I'm choosing UConn. <laughs> but <laughs> FAU has a chance to give them some fits. Okay, so King wants to see FAU play UConn in the second round. Uh, Sam, when you look at this East region, what potential later ma- later round matchups are you looking forward to? I mean, you, you look at it, uh, obviously a potential Sweet 16 matchup with San Diego <laughs> State. That's mm. a that's yeah. a championship yeah. rematch yeah. that you could get in the Sweet 16. And, um, you know, UConn won every single game by double digits in the tournament last year. Um, but that was a that was a tough game early on, and San Diego State brought back some good players. Of course, we know the Mountain West gets six teams into the field uh, this year, so their league was clearly viewed highly uh, amongst the uh, NCAA tournament committee. So I, I think that's a great great matchup uh, to see. But again, you go you go down to the bottom of the bracket, and King, you were there all week. Yeah. At Hilton South in Kansas City, yeah. watching Iowa State do what they do, like that would be an mm-hmm. elite. Uh, matchup and, and that's what I will say I, I will say I mean I, I'm picking UConn to come out of this region but that game against Iowa State Ooh. is not going to be a slouch right yeah. we, we, we talk about Houston's defense I made this point yesterday mm-hmm. at halftime we, we talk about Houston's defense as we should because they're great but we do not give enough credit to what TJ Altsberger has mm-hmm. done on the defensive side of things for the Cyclones. Mm-hmm. When you look at guards like Tame and Lipsy, Keyshawn Gilbert, the way they heat up the ball, their ability to one-on-one stay in front of their man, not rely on help side. Now all of a sudden when they do get beat, their rotations are elite. The backside help is phenomenal. So their defense is hard to scout and prepare for. And I don't know if UConn has seen a defense mm-hmm. that is as good as Iowa State all year. How do you how do you how do you beat a UConn team though? And Laws, you can answer this. I feel like you got to be able to out physical them. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. because their sets and and you've seen them all year. Like their offensive sets are so complex. Great. Like how do you how do you bust those up? I mean, I, I think it's all about getting them uncomfortable. And we kind of saw yeah. Marquette do that mm-hmm. early yesterday, mm-hmm. but it wasn't something that they could sustain. And yeah. even when we were talking about it, it's like, yeah. hey, like, this, that to me is what makes UConn so different is even if you do get them outside of what they do, yeah. this is a team that is experienced enough and talented enough as well that they always sort of usually get back to that. And you also sort of have to play above what you're used to sort of punching. Yeah, yeah. And no one's really been able to do that against them so far. And, and that's why I say good backcourts win. Because in games like Iowa State, when you play against Houston, the one-on-one defense, it, it, you're not going to run your sets. They're going to get you out of your sets. They're going to get you uncomfortable. So what do you have to do? You have to be able to go off the bounce and just make plays. That's one of those games where players have to make plays. The guards of UConn, and they're definitely good enough. Yep. Uh, Tristan Newton, Stefan Castle, they're good enough to be able to take you off the bounce and go make plays. That is a ball game where the best players will win. No matter what coaching you do, mm-hmm. the best players will win that game. And you have to be balanced. Like, yeah. I, to me, that is really what makes or breaks a team in a tournament. Yeah. You have to be able to win in multiple ways and both in your front and your backcourt. And that's, that's sort of why, like, again, with certain teams that we'll talk about in this bracket, mm-hmm. I feel stronger about than others because you really, you really got to be able to do that.
Uh, you mentioned a team in this bracket. I just want to say really fast, you guys can't smell this, but Harry decided to fill out his bracket in Sharpie, and I keep getting whiffs of the it's Sharpie so all the I've way brain cells yeah. right over here. Uh, yeah. uh, quickly, before we move on uh, to the next part of the bracket, I do want to mention Auburn. Obviously, they won the SEC tournament. It was a great uh, job by Bruce Pearl this season with that team. We saw how emotional he was as they were winning that game. Um, how far do you expect this Auburn team to go? I think this Auburn team's great. Um, we talk about depth, too, right, guys? Mm -hmm. Bruce Pearl has built one of the deepest teams, I think, uh, in the SEC. Dylan Cardwell coming off the bench, obviously, uh, Jani Broom and what he does. Um, I, I was really impressed with the way that they not only finished the regular season, but kind of took it to another level once the SEC tournament started. This time of year, it's all about how you're playing and how your stars are playing. And it feels like Broom and these guys, uh, Johnson, of course, Baker Mazzara, like this is a good group that, that relies on their depth game. Yeah, I mean, when you look at it, we, I didn't even mention this, the, the Auburn Sweet 16 matchup. That's another, oh, yeah. Yeah. That's another uh, battle that UConn is going to have to face because the metrics love Auburn. Yes. Mm -hmm. Top 10 offense in the country, yep. top 10 defense in the country. The only team that does that. The only team in the country. They yep. play hard on both sides of the basketball. And you know if you play for Bruce Pearl, you got to go all out and you got to bring it every single night. So I think that, uh, that the Sweet 16 matchup with Auburn and UConn could potentially be another trap game for UConn. They won't have it as easy as they did last year. No doubt. No. All right, let's go over to the Midwest swang. That is the Midwest region where Purdue is the number one overall seed. Now, Purdue mm. Mm. has historically mm. not done have very not? well in the NCAA say, tournament, you don't which say. has been very disappointing, especially <laughs> since Zach Eady has been there because the expectation has been for that Purdue team to go far. Uh, as you look at this region mm. and the number one seed on this side of the bracket, Lyles, where do you think Purdue is going to take an L this season? All right, so do you want it ASAP or do you want it later? I think it's going to be a little later this year. They can't, they can't lose in the first round. Um, I want it ASAP, no rush. Okay, because so if you want ASAP, TCU, that's, if, that's, that's the earliest I would go. Like, I, I think, again, you know, I, I think some people kind of thought yeah. that we're like, oh, like kind of pumping up the Big 12 a little bit too much. I don't. Yeah. This is genuinely, like, a great and deep conference. Mm -hmm. Jamie Dixon, yeah. very experienced coach. It's easy to forget that he's there because he's coaching a TCU team yeah. that, you know, gets buried beneath the Houstons, the right. Baylors, the Kansas State, like, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That is a team, again, I, and you, you're leaning on guards. I'm leaning on <laughs> balance. This is a balanced <laughs> team that could give Purdue issues. If it's not them, I feel very strongly that Tennessee would do it. They're okay. not getting past Tennessee. Yeah. Mm. I That's like kind that. of how my bracket shakes Period. out. Like, no, I, 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 I like just, that. Yeah. Uh, King, do you agree? You agree? 100%. Uh -huh. I, I'm choosing TCU right there. And the reason why is okay. because what, what, who, who does Purdue mainly play through? Zach yeah, Eady. They, they play Fred through Shelley. their big. And, and their <laughs> guards, I will say this. Matt Painter has went out and went to go get a guy like Lance Jones, mm -hmm. who is better. Yep. He provides yep. more depth. He's finally a guy who can get it off the bounce because last year in that first round game, they struggled. Their guards just weren't ready. They weren't ready for that level. They can throw right. good post passes, that's for sure. But if you're trading twos for threes, you're not winning any okay. ball game. But their guards have gotten a lot better this season. I wouldn't say a lot. A, they've gotten a, at better. least they've got they've improved. They've yeah. improved. What do you think the biggest <laughs> issue then is for Purdue right. and and possibly not being able to get over the hump of actually <laughs> going far in the tournament. Well, I think number one is a psychological thing. I mean, yes. that's what you got to have. Yeah, 100%. Because right. I remember my sophomore year, well, my freshman year at Baylor, we were playing, uh, we were playing, who were we playing? New Mexico State first round. Uh -huh. And mind you, no, my sophomore year. The second, my freshman year, we played Yale and got upset by Yale, Makai Mason, your yeah, boy. Yeah, that's my right? guy. So then the second year, <laughs> it was guys. a psychological <laughs> thing because we're going into the first round of the tournament thinking like, oh, snap. Right now it's a close game at halftime. The game is tied playing New Mexico State. We're like, oh, snap, we can't lose this game. Like, we're going to be the talk of the town again. So I think for Purdue, knowing yeah. that you haven't had that level of success and you yeah. have under, undermined everybody's expectations and you busted everybody's brackets for the past two, three years, it's a, it's a psychological battle. They could always one. just pull a Virginia. Oh, my gosh. No, they're, they? they're, not, they're, not, they're not. They're not. <laughs> and oh. be like, we never, we never want that to happen to us again. <laughs> And then to shock it's the a world. It's a very real thing, though. Right? It is. Like playing there's, to you not can lose be, and playing to yes, win. Exactly. Yes. But there's two different ways that you can look at it, right, King? You can either look at it as we already had the worst possible <laughs> thing happen, so nothing worse can happen than what happened last season. Yeah. Let's just play. Who cares? We've already done that thing. Or you can look at it like you just said, which is 
oh snap, we had the worst possible thing happen. Let's not let it happen again this year. Because it could get funnier this year. <laughs> they could lose to Grambling, who has not been in the tournament <laughs> until this year. We've been we've been doing this since 1939. Right? Oh, man. Yeah. So it, it could get worse if you're Purdue. Now, I, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't happen. think it's going to happen. <laughs> let, let, Sam? Let me, let me get in here. I, let me back Purdue for a little bit here. I, I, I think this team could potentially make the Elite Eight Final Four. Look at that. Not only because of Ooh. the pressure that they have on them, but, yeah. like, there's already this preconceived notion out there that Purdue can't handle the pressure, can't hack it. Um, they, they, this was a team that finished 11th in the Big Ten last year in three-point field goal percentage. They led the Big Ten in f- mm. three-point field goal percentage. Now, some of the newcomers that they had helped out, but, like, mm. when you have a Fletcher lawyer, Braden Smith, who, yeah. thank goodness, is okay. He was injured in the tournament the other day. He seemed to be okay. When you have them improving and then also playing through Zach Eady, last year they were just so one-dimensional because yeah. you yeah. could you could triple team Zach Eady. When they're making shots from the outside, that, that makes this a, a, a multi-dimensional team. So, yeah. I don't think they're going to lose in the first round. Who? I don't know if they'll win the national championship. Yeah, yeah. Or... They'll get out of the first round, and then that monkey will get off their back. They sure. won't have any more pressure. And then the horned frogs will jump on their back. <laughs> <laughs> From a monkey to a horned frog. Okay. Uh, let's talk about South Carolina. They were picked to fish de- finish dead last in the SEC preseason poll, and then they came in sixth seed. Uh, they're taking on Oregon. King, what are you looking at when you look at the South Carolina team? I actually really like these guys, and, and for me – the number that you got to focus on is 70, right? They average 72 points per game. The number is 70. When they score 70 points or more, they are 21 and 0. When they go under 70, they are 5 and 12. Mm-hmm. The number is 70, and they average 72 a game. I think that this team has an inside out uh, threat when you look at uh, BJ Mack or Michi Johnson. I mean, these guys can get it going. They don't shoot the three wall. That's my only concern. They don't shoot it well from deep, but they're tough, they're physical. And if they can somehow get the game to 70, it's a dub. Experience, too. Yeah. Yes, that's too. They're an experienced team. And let's credit Lamont Paris for what he's done, too, in Columbia. Because, like you said, Christine, the expectations were not there right. for the South Carolina team to be much of anything. Um, and I think they surprised a lot, of, a lot of teams early on in the season. But what impressed me most was the later on, the wins. Yeah. Because they were game planning for Carolina. But they were able to, to handle it and, um, and win some games down the stretch. Okay, so when you look at this uh, Midwest region, it honestly looks like it could be up for grabs. Like, it's wide open, right? Uh, There's a bunch of teams that I feel like could go far. Lyles, when you look at this region, what teams do you expect to make a run? So, I mentioned before that there's a very specific type of team that I like. And it's a team that's got... It's a balance. It's it's balance. Balance. But but the other piece of that... You got to have some young guys and you got to have some vets. And in the case of Tennessee, Ooh. they've got a star, Dalton Kinnett. Like yeah. oh, don't even okay. hang so, so, like Which, that. by so. the way, young guys and vets is also a form of balance. Balance, good. It <laughs> is balance. Thank you. So, like, I, I think this team, and, and again, it's that balance. They play on good on both sides of the ball. Now, I will say this, and we kind of talked about this before, Sam, with <laughs> Tennessee, their loss in the SEC tournament, it was kind of like, hey, bro, like between you guys, Alabama, and Kentucky, you're yeah. supposed to be the one team that can defend. Yeah, yeah. And they extremely did not defend in their loss. <laughs> uh, so that was a little shocking, but I am going to take that as like, hey, Rick Barnes, we're going to yeah. be like, hey, guys, look, that's if you do that in this tournament, you're not, you're not going to be in business. You just got to yeah. play defense for six <laughs> more games, and there's not, a, there's not a team in this tournament that you can't beat. So I, I like – Tennessee specifically in that region. And plus, like, it, you can work out, I feel like, a bunch of different paths for them mm-hmm. to where this doesn't seem that difficult. I love Tennessee. I absolutely love Dalton Connect. Mm-hmm. I, I think mm-hmm. if, it's, if there's no Zach Eady playing basketball in college this year, Dalton Connect it's is no player. doubt about yeah. it. Dalton Connect wins mm-hmm. National Player of the Year. He is that level of good. I mean, the 40 ball that he is hit, that he, that he dropped on Kentucky, the 39 against Auburn, mm-hmm. my man can get buckets. And that's one thing that Tennessee didn't have last year. They did not have a guy in which we call late shot clock guys. Yep. Clock running down under five. Can you go create your own basket and go score mm-hmm. at a high level, at a consistent high level when your team needs it the most? They had Zakai Ziegler who can break people down, but they were very robotic. You add Dalton Connect to a team that is a veteran, that's led by veterans, that has a Zakai Ziegler who can control the tempo, and now you got a late shot clock guy who can go get you a bucket whenever he wants to. Literally a a, a formula for success. Real quick, I'll I'll talk about Creighton in a second, but is Dalton Connect going to be like the best player to ever win player of the year runner-up that we've had in college basketball? Ooh. 
I, I mean, <laughs> like, Possibly. That's like Ooh. 1A, 1B. I don't know if we've had yeah. a runner-up for uh. player of the year like Dalton Connect before. I mean, that's, that's, that's a great point. Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, but let's we'll talk about Creighton here. I, I okay. think Creighton could be a team, uh, Christine, that can um, cause some issues on this side of the bracket um, out of the Big East. They got a big guy. Um, you know, we know what they can do with Baylor Shireman, of course. Um, they can shoot it from the outside. This is a team that, uh, you know, they can shoot a ton of threes. We saw them beat UConn uh, in Omaha earlier this year. Shireman actually was not really prevalent in that game. Um, Alexander was great for this team as well. They're an experienced team. Um, and then, obviously, with Kalkbrenner underneath, I think Creighton could be a team that uh, causes some issues in this bracket. But, again, this is a wide open kind of bracket, yeah. and Creighton had a good year in the tournament last year, too. I mean, that Creighton team has three guys that averages over 17 points per game. You're getting about 50-plus scoring from three guys every single night. You talk about balance. I mean, that's kind of sort of balance, yeah. but I don't know if there's a, a, a trio that averages right, more strong. points in the country that's that strong. Yeah. They have not been great on the road this year, so that's a little concerning. I want everybody that's watching this show to take a shot every time we say the word balance. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> let's go over to the West region, shall we? Uh, we have the number one seed here, UNC. Uh, one of my favorite players there, Armando Baycott. Lyles, when you look at this North Carolina team, what have you liked out of them so far this season? Uh, well, without using uh, BLANCE. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think the one of my favorite stories in all of college basketball this year has been R.J. Davis. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned guard play, so I'm, I'm going to steal from you on this there we one. There we go, there we go. He, he's senior. Yeah. Like, we talk about it in football all the time, Christine, especially, you know, the past couple of seasons with the transfer right. portal. Yeah. Hey, you have an adult playing quarterback. They got an adult playing point guard, and they got an adult down low in right. Armando Baycott. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the perfect just amount of role players. And actually, King, this is a team that – Sam and I were talking about, and I was like, you know, it feels like if Roy Williams was still the coach of this team, a mm -hmm. lot of people would be picking them to win the championship. That's a great point. Because this yeah. team has the exact type of makeup yeah. that those teams that Roy had, the ones that won the title, they have the exact mm -hmm. same makeup as this North Carolina team. Interesting thought there. <laughs> I, I, Just saying. I actually like it. I mean, I, I think Hubert Davis does a good job. I was going to say. He does. But, yeah, I, but, I, 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 I get what he's saying. Yeah, I, I get what he's saying. Like, yeah. Roy Williams was the coach. We're like, yes, they, we all, in, all in, all in on all North in. Carolina. Do you mean like casual fans that really don't understand Hubert Davis yeah. and his coaching style? Yeah. Okay. Like, the ca like all of you that are tuning in right now that are like, oh, my gosh, i got to figure out my bracket. <laughs> Y'all that are watching right now, if Roy Williams was coaching this team, you would have it in Sharpie that you could smell like mine. Okay. That's, that's, that's potent. Yeah, yeah, we can all smell it. But listen, we, we have to talk about before we leave off North Carolina, Harrison Ingram. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I think that, I mean, first off, he's a Dallas kid, so you know I'm always going to rep yeah, my for city sure. for sure. But, but when you look at the development, you look at the role that he has played. He was at Stanford last year. He was good. He was projected when he was first came out. He was a McDonald's All-American. He was projected to be a one-and-done type of player. He didn't have that year. Well, he finally stuck with it two years there and then goes to North Carolina, plays a role, excels in his role. Not only just the score. I mean, at times we've seen him score 30. We've seen him be able to put up points. But his rebounding, he's doing the little things. He's buying in to what Hubert Davis needs in order to win games. And I think that now he's legitimately turned himself into Harrison Ingram, the NBA player. Not just Harrison Ingram, yeah. the Stanford wing. Harrison Ingram, the NBA player. And that's mm -hmm. what he's finally grown and matured into, being in North Carolina. Yeah, he's definitely grown since he's been there in Chapel Hill. I want to ask you a question, King, because you mentioned that you're a hometown guy. Your Baylor Bears are in Ooh. this region. Uh, what are you looking at when it comes to them? How far do you think they're going to go? You know, right now in my bracket, I have them going to the Sweet 16, uh, losing to Arizona. Okay. And it pains me to say, because you know I love my Baylor Bears, you know I'm always going to rep for Scott Drew, but I just don't know if they defend well enough to make a Elite Eight, Final Four type of run. And not just that, I think that their scoring sometimes can be limited. You know, we talk about good guards. Ray J. Dennis can get in the lane, he can create. Jay Nunn at times can do the same thing, but Jacoby Walters is a very limited player. And yes, he's a talent. Yes, he's a top 10 draft pick next year, but he's more of a catch and shoot guy that is not really creating off the bounce. So I think at times we saw against Iowa State, we've seen it other times this season, 
they struggle to score the basketball and they can sometimes get limited. Right, Ray J. Dennis averages almost seven assists a game. Majority of his assists is on a pick and roll and a lob to Misi, but if you take that away, I don't really see him too many times hitting the skip pass, hitting the pass out for, to create threes for shooters. I mean, if Jalen Bridges can have the type of season that he's had towards the latter half, where he's shown that he can get it off the bounce, and he can really be like more of a consistent three and D, Mr. Glue it all for Baylor, I think they can have a chance. But I, I got them out at the, at the Sweet 16. Okay. Uh, let's go to the dirty south, shall we? <laughs> south region. Dirty, that that is where Houston <laughs> is the number one seed. Now, I feel like Houston has a really good shot to win this whole dang thing this season. Um, how do we like how this region shakes out, Sam? I like Houston's chances a lot. I, I, I have some pause with the way that they played against Iowa State last mm, night. 28-point yeah. loss in the championship game, but uh, yeah, you look down there at the bottom, the two seed. What is the health status of Tyler Kolick for Marquette? Mm -hmm. I think that's a big question. Kentucky, can they play some semblance of defense this year in the tournament? I think that's a, a question to ask. But, yeah, let, I mean, let's give some credit to, to Houston and what they have been able to do this year. They go from dominating the American yeah. to joining the best league yeah. in college basketball this year, and they win it. And they, they win it without a ton of a ton of questions uh, around them. You know, they they lost at Allen Fieldhouse, right? And then they win 11 straight. All right, yeah. and, like that does not happen. There are not many teams in the country that can do that. Houston is uh, a championship team coached by a championship coach. Mm -hmm. So I think I, I like their odds in this uh, in this bracket, Christine. Thoughts? Yeah, and I, I was going to say too. I I sort of I don't view Houston the same way as Purdue. Like, let me relax on that. But. I do feel like this is a team that feels like they have something to prove as well. They do. Mm -hmm. And I think that that game that we saw yesterday mm -hmm. out of them is a huge wake-up call. Like, all right, man, like, it's – hey, bro, it's March 17th. Like, it's time to get it done. Right. Um, and I think they're talented enough. Mm -hmm. And I love the way that they play defense. It obviously turns into offense for them. It didn't yesterday. But, um, you know, I, I'm with you. Like, I, I have Houston in my Final Four. All right, unpopular opinion, y'all. I love Kentucky. I absolutely. I don't <laughs> yes. care about the defense struggles. Okay. I don't care. I think that you need good guards in order to yeah. win, mm -hmm. and they have three of them. And if you want to add Wagner in, who is a top five player in the country, then they have four. But they have three guards. Antonio Reeves yeah, is an absolute bucket. bucket getter. Reed Shepard, nobody expects him to do what he's doing, but he's a 50 50 80 guy. He's a 180 shooter, right? To shoot 54 from the three, to be able to have those big That's games cool. is absolutely crazy. And my favorite player probably in college basketball, Rob with the shifts. Rob Dillingham shooting 45 from three. He has star potential, who I think would easily be a first-round draft pick next year. But I think that we, we talk about getting hot, going on runs. You're going to have to outscore Kentucky. Okay, but so here's the thing, though. Like, if Kentucky scores 89, it's yeah. absolutely not out of the question that they could let up 92. That's the only thing I don't like not, about not, Kentucky. But hear me out. Is that look on this? Look on. Tell me one team in here that's going to put up 92. Because Houston surely not going to put up 92. <sighs> Marquette, if, if Tyler Kolick is not healthy, they're not putting up 92. If he's not healthy, they're not putting up 92. Mm -hmm. Texas Tech's not putting up 92. Texas Tech is not. They might not get 92, 92 offensive rebounds, but they won't yeah. score 92. <laughs> they not. Like, you, you're going to have to outscore Kentucky. Which is why I, mean, I think we. But see, I feel like I've I, I feel like I've said that about this team. What was this nine times this year? <laughs> you know what I'm you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that's why like I'm because I'm with you. Yeah. I'm absolutely with you. But again, like, dude, it's been it's been bad enough to where they've lost nine games. Yeah. <laughs> where people were on John Calipari's behind, <laughs> like ready to fire him. Stuff, you know what I mean? What, like, what about the 11 seed right here in this region? NC State. NC State. I, I don't know if they beat Texas Tech. DJ Horn, man. I mean, yeah, he, he's. Good. I don't know if they beat Texas Tech. The way Texas Tech defends, I think that Big 12 defense is a different level of defense. It is, yeah. The the, the way that they pressure you, the way that they force everything to the sideline and the backside help, you don't see like it's hard to prepare. The ACC don't play defense like that. It's really hard to prepare, and you're right. NC State is playing well. I mean, beating North Carolina is a huge win. But I don't know if you're going to see it. You're going to be able to prepare for a level of defense like Texas Tech because Texas Tech isn't the most talented team in the country. They strictly win games due to heart and physicality and toughness. Mm -hmm. yeah. Joe Toussaint, Pop Isaacs, I mean, everything that Pop Isaacs, Isaacs has gone through in the media to still be able to go out there and perform and be locked in 100%, this team is tough mentally and physically.
Also, is there a team that has ever needed a spring break more than NC State after winning five games? <laughs> yeah, five they need, they need yeah, three. Yeah, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's talk about Shaka's team really fast because Shaka Smart is a guy that I feel like has almost done it a lot of times. Now we mentioned mm. the fact that Tyler Kolick is not at 100%. How far, if they don't have Tyler Kolick, how far can this Marquette team go? <sighs> I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know the answer to that question. I, I think it's certainly concerning. I would be shocked if Tyler Kolick doesn't play in this tournament. I, as far as I know, I think they let the committee know that he would be available for the NCAA tournament so that would not affect their seats. So, yeah. um, gosh, you're relying a lot on Cam Jones. Yeah. Um, and, the, and by the way, Kolick isn't the only one that's been a bit banged up for Marquette yep. uh, in, recent, uh, in recent days. So, I don't know. That, that's, a, that's a tall, tall task if you don't have a healthy yeah. Tyler Kolick, who was the biggest player of the year last year. I mean, his playmaking, he averages almost eight assists a game. Is he the best point guard in the country? You talk about guards. No. I wouldn't put him as the best point guard in the country. Primarily due to the fact that, yes, he averages probably more assists than almost anybody in America. Uh -huh. But I think what Jamal Shedd does offensively yeah. and defensively, I think what Tristan Newton, I mean, Tristan mm -hmm. Newton's stat line is like 15, 6, and 6. Mm -hmm. like, that's crazy. I mean, yeah. I'm, it, it blows my mind that we don't give Tristan Newton more love. No doubt. We got to yeah. give him his flowers because that man deserves them. He is that level of talented. But Tyler Kolick is probably top five easily. Okay. And he, he's, a, he's a really good talent, one of the best in the country. But I wouldn't put him as the best. But for this team, he is the engine that makes this team go. Yeah. Eight assists a game, and your next person is only averaging about two or three. I mean, that's a major difference. So I think that Tyler Kolick, w without them, hey. Mar Marquette is going to struggle. Florida and Colorado are the two teams mm -hmm. that I see. Like, you could get past Western Kentucky. Yeah. Yes. Like, that's fine. Like, but if he's hurt. Yeah. I mean, if he's hurt and they're playing Western Kentucky, like, they could lose that game. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know that it's, like, I think I would pick Florida or Colorado if Tyler yeah. Kolick is not playing. Okay, now that we've gone through the entire bracket, you can sign up for ESPN's Tournament Challenge. Download the app to create your own bracket and compete in the number one men's bracket game. You can create up to 25 brackets, which is sus, but get yours filled out before March 21st if you would like to do that. Now that we've gone through the entire bracket, we have obviously all four of us here. Uh, we're gonna give you some bracket tips I'm going to give a tip, and our panel of guys is going to tell you why they think it's a good tip or maybe not so good of a tip. Mm. The first tip, go chalk early. Do you guys agree with that? Go chalk early. Elaborate. Are you just saying the statement? Yeah. What, yeah what the, that means that No you, upsets? Yeah. Not a ton of upsets? Oh, I'm not bad. I'm young. I'm sorry. I, I, it's been like that. I'm <laughs> What the heck does that mean? What in the world? My bad. I'm young. <laughs> It's, it's been a long day. Go okay. talk. I'm gonna let you answer first. Um, I think yes, but <laughs> I'm young. I, I think I'm dead. I think okay. generally yes. Go chalk early. Um, we've only had I think we had seven upsets uh, in the first round last year. I think we average about eight and a half upsets in the first round. So anywhere between like 15 to like five upsets in your first round, I think is is probably where you want to live. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm young, Christine. Uh, <laughs> but I, I think, it, so I agree with it because obviously, like, bro, we did the seeding off the teams because they were the best teams during the season, yeah. Yeah. right? Right. But I think the way, the place that I usually come down on it is like when I think early, I'm thinking like, like for obviously first and second round. But right. I think once I get to the Sweet 16 and Elite Eight, like mm -hmm. it's, it ain't all cute right. and stuff like that. Now yeah, it's, yeah. it's time to it's time to play time ball. For business, right? Like, yeah. and, and we get to the nitty gritty. So, but yes, it is it is a good tip. Just never fill your bracket out with Sharpie, please. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, that's bad. <laughs> hey, bro, you guys, hey. Uh, it's hey, the wheel is slowing <laughs> down. Now bro. that you know, <laughs> do you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, I'm not gonna lie to you. I still don't fully understand. Oh my god. Okay, let's go to the next. <laughs> The 12 versus 5 matchup is a good place to find an upset, and so is 11 versus 6. Yes. What's a good 12, 5, 11, 6 game that you guys think that we should keep an eye out for? I know I'm a Sunbelt guy. James Madison mm -hmm. versus Wisconsin. Ooh. I know Wisconsin, you know, just got to the Big Ten title and everything. Um, but, again, this is a James Madison team. I think they only have, what, three losses? I don't have that on my bracket, but I, I – they, they have not lost many times this year. And I and I know a lot of people are like, oh, mid-major, yada, yada, Okay, cool. Like, they still know how to win basketball games. And this is March. Yep. Magic happens. 
I just, that's, that's where my eyes went. I, I know NC State is hot still for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I think they're going to be a little tired, um, but I'm going with the Dukes. James Madison, the uh, nation's longest winning streak, I think, coming into yeah. uh, the NCAA tournament, winning 13 straight. Um, pretty cool for the Dukes. And by the way, you go back to the like the opening day, I guess, of college basketball. James Madison beat Michigan State. Yep. Mm -hmm. And look at where we are now. Um, but uh, I think I'm looking at this 11-6. I know, King, you said you're, you're high on Texas Tech, and I agree. There's something about momentum, and there's something mm. about like March that just makes you want to root for a, yeah. uh, a team like NC State. Uh, the story there is just awesome. We saw DJ Burns walking out of the tunnel yesterday, and it was like, man, this guy's ready to go. Dude, chest out. He's ready to go <laughs> in the low post. Um, obviously, DJ Horn and what he did, um, working through foul trouble yesterday as well. Um, Diara, I mean, fasting for Ramadan. Like, this this whole team, I feel like, is, a, is just a, has been a movie this year, and I, I kind of want it to continue, but we'll see what happens in that 11-6. I'm giving you two 12-5s. Oh. I'm choosing two 12-5s. We're going to go over here to the Midwest. Okay. McNeese and Gonzaga. If you oh, have not one, yeah. seen McNeese, yeah. down there in the Southland, shout out my man Chris Grant, the commissioner. McNeese is good. Yeah. Led by Shahada Wells. Shahada Wells, if you don't know anything about Shahada Wells, he was the backup point guard for Mike Miles last year at TCU. Mike Miles was preseason Big 12 player of the year. Okay, he was struggling to get on the court there. But the year before, my man averaged 18 in Texas Arlington. He's been getting buckets. They dominate in the Southland. They defend. They, they, they're not as tall as you would like them to be, but they're aggressive, they're physical, and they're led by a guy who's extremely controversial, but I think is a great coach, in Will Wade, okay? Mm -hmm. So I think that that's one to look at, all right? St. Mary's in Grand Canyon. Yes. Grand Canyon has a dude in Tyon Grant Foster. NBA man, player. NBA. Yeah. And, and we forget he was at Kansas. He was supposed to be Kansas's best player. I don't know what happened, whatever. But he was the number one JUCO player in the country. Was supposed to be Kansas's best player. Ends up having a heart disease, having a heart problems. Now he goes to Grand Canyon. Shout out Bryce Drew, connection to the Drew family, right? Mm -hmm. But they have dudes. They're dominant. They've been there before. They've gotten wins in the NCAA tournament. Grand Canyon over St. Mary's. Mm. I love how passionate King is when he talks. <laughs> um, the youngsters, like, yeah. Well, are, yeah, those young guys. Young. You know how they are. <laughs> All right, tip number three. Pick at least one double-digit seed to advance to the second round. <laughs> uh, which 10-plus seed do we think will advance to the second round? Sam? I'll, go, I'll go College of Charleston here and my guy Pat Kelsey mm. doing it for the second year in a row. Um, the Cougs are an interesting team. Uh, they started out really well. They ride a 12-game win streak uh, into the tournament. Um, just coming out of the CAA, Rain Smith had a huge game in the tournament uh, yesterday at 23 points, made six threes in that game in the championship game against Stony Brook. Um, look, Alabama had the best had the best offense in the entire country this year. They, too, with Kentucky, have had some struggles on the defensive end. College of Charleston puts up about uh, 80 points per game. I think they can ride with Alabama, so I will take College of Charleston um, to uh, advance to the second round. I like that pick, Sam. And, you know, it, had they made the tournament, I would have gone with Indiana State. <laughs> but they didn't because they lost to Drake. And I'm going to go with the Bulldogs of Drake. I like Drake. Drake! And, Drake. and, and like, not only because, uh, obviously, we've got the Drake meme. Christine's been doing that all night. She has been doing it all night, <laughs> among other songs and dance. But he, that's neither here nor there. Uh, this Drake team, man, they've got Tucker DeVries. Fuck it. He, he, man, like, he absolutely, I think he scored something like 17 consecutive points against Indiana State. This is, they are going to be one of these, these March stories. He has a big game. His daddy's the coach. America's going to fall in love with him, and then they will lose to Illinois or Iowa State. Okay. All right, I'm going to give you all a crazy one. Oh, gosh. I'm going Samford over Kansas. Yeah, they're banged up. Because, number one, Kansas is banged up. Right. They looked horrible. Yeah, yeah they did. Yeah. In the Big 12 game. Uh-huh. Without Cincinnati. Hunter Dickinson. Right. Without McCullough. And we don't still don't know what percentage they will be playing at. But this Samford team averages 86 points per game, 18 assists per game, and shoots 39 from three. That right there is a recipe to knock down a banged-up Kansas squad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A balanced offense. McCullough, yeah. McCullough's healthy. <laughs> Dickinson's healthy. Still picking that that no. upset there. If they're both healthy. 
I, 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 I think Kansas might have been one of the most overrated teams all year. That's true. Yeah, I agree. So, fair enough. Um, yeah, yes. Probably yeah, fair enough. And if, yeah. if they were a swimming pool three feet. Okay. I'm, I'm young. I don't get that one. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have any depth. No oh, depth. Oh, oh, that makes oh, sense. That was, hey, that was they good. That was really good. slow. That was actually on this. Hey, get you a Georgia State education, yeah. America. So, that didn't make any sense to me either. Uh, my microphone also just fell. All right. Uh, tip number four, if you're wondering what I'm doing. Tip number four, pick a seven seed or higher to make the Elite Eight. So which low seed do we like to make the Elite Eight? Uh, yeah, I'll take Michigan State here, Christine. Okay. Um, I, look, count out, uh, count out Michigan State at your own peril for uh, yeah. for this team in March. They they've been able to make some runs. Tom Izzo, of course, making it 26 straight NCAA tournament appearances. Keep in mind too that this Michigan State team was started the year preseason. They were number four in the country and then just fell off of a cliff. But they showed some signs this year that uh, they can make a run. Made a run as a seventh seed of the Sweet 16 last year. Remember they beat uh, USC and the two seed Marquette. Um, but man, they beat Baylor by 24, King. You remember that one earlier this year? That was uh, oh, wow. That's rude. That was yeah, uh, that's crazy. You know, that was that was <laughs> one like of their that. highlights. But um, I don't know. I could I could see it. No, yeah. I like that. And Michigan State has done that before. Mm. I mean, where you know they they perhaps didn't perform what yeah. they would have hoped in the regular season. They made a tournament run. I am going to go with TCU. Because in like part that. of that, like that Kansas, like so that. I've like got that. them beating Purdue. Yeah. Right. I, I have them getting Kansas, and I've got them beating Kansas. Yeah. And then I have them ultimately lose, losing to Tennessee. But again, that balance, man. Like this team, like I think they are built, especially in this particular region. Mm -hmm. If it was set up differently, I would, I would certainly feel different. Yeah, yeah. But because, because it is Purdue, because it, I think it would be Kansas, and they don't have that depth. I think TCU is the team that is set up nicely to make a run if they're playing their best basketball. Yeah, and I, and I give you one, another crazy one, right? And I hate to do this, but New Mexico. Because they're, gonna eventually, like they're eventually going to have to play against Baylor. And, and I, I will say that if New Mexico can get hot because they win their tournament, when you look at Mashburn, when you look at House, when you look at Dent, I mean, they have three guards who are excellent. Maybe as good of a trio as anybody in America mm -hmm. that – we really don't talk about because yep. they're such in a lower conference. So I think if those guys get hot with the way that they're playing right now, with the way that they're defending, sharing the basketball, I think that could be a team that can cause some problems. And Baylor has had their, their struggles as far as defending good guards. So I think that those that trio can give Baylor fits and potentially knock them off in that. We've been trashing around. Baylor. Watch, they're going to make it to the Final Four this year. I hope so. <laughs> do you have them in your Final Four? I do not. Okay, so then they're not going to make it. Um, last year I chose Miami in my Final Four. Look what happened. Why'd you choose Miami? Because it's great to be Miami Hurricane. Where's Miami this year? I didn't see them. You, you shut up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't good. All right, number five, the uh, final tip is don't pick all one seeds in your Final Four. All of the guys believe, uh, we already talked about this, that Purdue is the most likely one seed to win. Now, earlier, I, or to lose. lose. I, earlier, I said UNC, so thank you so much for these UNC highlights. But now looking at the bracket, <laughs> I actually want to say that I think UConn is the most likely to lose only because their region is so freaking stacked, right? They have... Auburn, Illinois, what, Harry? You have had way too much of this marker. <laughs> but, like, their, their region is stacked. It I is. feel like they're, more, they're most That's likely fair. to get upset before the Final Four. I can understand if okay, you're talking but, about but, but, Elite but, Eight. But before the Final Four, but Purdue's of, but, but, region is is But of all is of very the ones, soft. Christine, of all the ones, okay, like, Purdue still Houston, exists. Houston, 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 Houston. There's Houston. Houston, there's Houston. Houston just lost by four but, touchdowns. Yeah. Right. I, okay. So I can see how, but I'm. Well, all I'm saying is I don't think that Purdue is necessarily the most likely no, because right. they are all a very aside, easy right. yeah. region. I hear you. Easy. They gonna lose second round. What? You talking about easy? We got them losing second round. Anyways, you do. <laughs> okay. So a couple of other tips: if you pick your champion from a traditional power school and pick a team in the top 40 of defense, all those tips will help you from reacting to your busted bracket, like one of these guys. Yeah, um, I'm done. Let's take that stupid paddle. Not a lot. Prince it. It's all right. No, we just lost. <laughs> On March Madness, I wait two years for them to be March Madness just to get blown out by a Pac-12 team that wasn't even a winning record. All 
All right, let's take a look at Busted Brackets presented by Coors Light. Which, by the way, guys, that is why some people fill out 25 brackets, which is a little much, but that's why, because you don't want to react like that. So at least what, one of them has to the do number, something. What's the number? What's the limit of, of, of number of brackets? I you told fill out? you, if you do it on ESPN.com, you get 25 brackets. No, no, oh, no, so no. Well, what, what's the limit? Like the normal limit? Like if you exceed this number, you're, you're, you're considered a little weird. More than two. If you're doing more than two, you're doing too much. <laughs> You can fill out 25 brackets. Um, she she took that personal. Don't discourage. She took it personal. Yeah. With, with. No, I don't fill out more than two. <laughs> I used the way that I usually do it is I do a, a bracket with my teams. Yeah. Which ends up working in my favor That's sometimes. Right. And then, like and an then I do a one, real bracket. But if you're a ball knower, as we say on the internet, a hooper, you do one or two. Man. No, That's see, it. I just honestly filling out brackets stresses me out. <laughs> okay, so um, which teams do you think are the biggest candidates to bust some brackets? Either a low seed that's going to go far or a high seed that's going to take a big L. Yeah, I'll take the five seed uh, St. Mary's. Uh, they, they were impressive this year in the West Coast Conference that was traditionally obviously owned by Gonzaga. Um, this was a year for St. Mary's and the Gales who won the regular season. Uh, they also won the West Coast Conference tournament way earlier on in the week. Um, but you go back and they started the year three and five. They had some weird, weird losses early on in December to Weber State, uh, San Diego State, Xavier. San Diego State, of course, is uh, acceptable, but you know there were some weird ones in there. But then they go on and just go on this tear throughout the rest of the uh, the season. They finished with a 26 and seven <laughs> record. Um, they made a bit of a run, ran it to UConn last year in the tournament. I think they could uh, they could make a run. They got Mahaney, who's great, another year of experience under his belt. So I'm going to go St. Mary's here. Yeah, I'm going Grand Canyon. I mean, I think that those guys, when you look at the way that they've been playing, the way that Bryce Drew has um, his whole team, just understanding how to play basketball the right way. <clears throat> I mean, my, 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 one of my best friends, Jake Lindsay, is one of the assistant coaches there who I played <laughs> with at Baylor. And so I, I actually watch these guys a lot. I watch them, and Oops. I'm like, these, these guys can actually really hoop. I mean, they have one of the best environments in college basketball. They're tough. They're physical. And, and the biggest thing I like is one-on-one. -on -one. What, what is my theme all day, Christine? What? What's my, theme? <laughs> what, what's my, what's my theme, Christine, Your all theme? day? Oh, um, I forgot already. Guard, oh, guard, guard play, guard play. play. Sorry. I was reading something else. Hey, I'm <laughs> telling you, bro, that marker hit me. I heard, I heard you say one-on-one. -on okay, can I please tell you honestly what happened? You said one-on-one. -on -one. And you guys know, every time I hear something, it triggers a song. So I was singing a song Here in my go. head, and I didn't hear anything that you said because the song was playing. But yes, you've been talking about Good Guard Play. What and that's song the, was in your head, Christine? There's a song for a show called One on One. It's a one theme on song. One. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I was playing that <laughs> in my head. So whatever you said, I wasn't listening to. But anyways, you've been talking about Good Guard Play. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Grand Canyon has that. We talked know. about Tayon Grand Foster earlier. We talked about this team is experienced. They have won games in the NCAA tournament. They understand how to pull off big upsets. They are used to winning. What are you laughing at now, Christine? <laughs> Sorry, Cologne was talking to me in my ear. <laughs> <laughs> they understand how to pull off big upsets. They've been here. They've done it. They know what it takes. Bryce Drew is a great coach. Grand Canyon. I also want to just say one thing. King is not a homer, necessarily. We have heard him talk about Baylor a lot, but we've also heard of him talking about his friend that coaches for Grand Canyon. <laughs> Obviously, Scott Drew's family yeah, being it. He's like, he's not a homer, but he really does sound like a homer today. I'm not going to lie. Hey, I'll just say it takes one to know one, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Harry, who do you have? You want to see That's Christine's bracket buster. Later. Uh, I've got Kentucky. Oh, yes. I've got Kentucky yeah. because, dude, again, nine losses, man. We talked oh, about them losing? Yeah, yeah, I've got, yes, in terms of bracket, bracket oh. busting your bracket, a, yeah. a high seeded team that could lose. I lo love this young man right here, right? Reed Shepard, Rob, Rob mm. Dillingham, like half these guys are going to the league, but it doesn't matter if you give up. Listen, they gave up 96 to Georgia this year. You know what I'm saying? Like, like they've, Who they cares gave about up, defense? They gave up at least <laughs> 89 points. Georgia. At least 89 points. Ten times this year, they gave up over 100 twice, over 90. This uh, looks like eight-ish times. So, like, again, 100% with you on like, hey, bro, like <laughs> that guard play, like you know, like if they if they just like play like 25% defense, yes, just a that's bit. balance, low key for them, because <laughs> because they're going to score. I just. In a six-game stretch, you're telling me in a six-game stretch, mm -hmm. one team is not going to get them, like, just because they're just not going to D up? Like, I, so that's why I've got Kentucky. Okay. Uh, Somebody I'm, will do it. Who do you got, Christine? I have, okay, we talked about this a little bit earlier today. Uh, the fact that 
Kansas is so beaten up. And as King said, he felt like they were overrated going into the season. So without Kevin McCullough and without Hunter Dickinson, at least at 100%, I feel like this Kansas team can lose to Samford. Yeah. Um, and because a lot of people sometimes aren't really paying attention to what's going on in college basketball, they just see Kansas, the fact that they've had a history of playing really well in the tournament. Um, I feel like people are going to have their brackets busted once Samford um, takes that win and they a lot of people probably have Kansas in their final four they don't know what's going so on. So people's credit though you know because we went to Kansas for game day for football and then you went this year for basketball too yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. When you walk up in that place and you see all that history that Ooh. get that gets you man. I, I like listen I get it. Kings play there before I will say that right? Kansas like, is one of the best places I don't know about playing there, but to yeah. watch a basketball game, the yeah. atmosphere is unmatched. It's almost, my, my mom said it the best. It's almost like the spirit of James yep. Naismith. Yeah. Like the spirit <laughs> of all, through. like the basketball gods just comes right. out, comes through the ground, and you're like, well, now nah, I can't make a shot, right? <laughs> but then they get on the road, and it's a completely yeah, different yeah, ball game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they yeah. get in a neutral side game, completely That's different right. ball game. Yeah, it's, it's the ghosts. Uh, also, pay heat. All right, yes, sign up for ESPN's Tournament Challenge. Download the app to create your own bracket and compete in the number one men's bracket game. You can create up to 25 brackets. Get yours filled out before March 21st. All right, let's take a look at the most reliable team presented by Xfinity. Uh, which team has been the most consistent, toughest in big moments, or just seems to show up consistently uh, during the postseason? Sam. Yeah, I, I don't think there's another team in the country that's been more reliable than UConn has been this year. Mm. Um, it's the easy answer. I get it. Uh, right. But it, the, all of the expectations that this team had on them to repeat, be the first team to repeat since Florida did it, they haven't showed <clears throat> like they even think about repeating. Like there is no stress on the, on the faces of these guys. Tristan Newton, you watch him out there. It's, he is stone cold. Stephon Castle was injured at the start of the year, has come on strong. I mean, he's a lottery pick guy. Donovan Klingon, mm -hmm. we mentioned. Samson Johnson, who backs him up off the bench. Um, Cam Spence, we mentioned him as an impact transfer. They're just, they can hurt you so many different ways. They got five players averaging more than 11 points per game. But the difference is that any one of those five players can go off for 20 points a game. And I just I don't know that there's a lot of other teams in the country that can do that uh, and do it consistently. So I'm going to take UConn as the most reliable team. You know, Sam, I was going to take UConn, but I've heard you stole my answer. So I got to give it to you. But, but UConn, so I'm going to have to go Iowa State. That's a good one, too. And, and yeah. I think that Iowa State, we talked about their defense. We didn't touch on their offense that much. Uh, when you look at what Iowa State did in the game against Houston, Houston has what we've said is the best defense in the <laughs> country all year. Well, the way that they were picking them apart off the pick and roll, all right, Pick and roll, big pop, because you know Houston's going to blitz the ball screen. Mm -hmm. So now it's a dump down, big to big pass. I mean, the plays that TJ Altsenberg, oh my goodness. <laughs> Embarrassing. Did you, oh my goodness. <laughs> that was, that was no, I, that's disgusting. But the way that they broke down Houston's offense and we're, we're, we're getting wide open look after wide open look. You know, Mamchilovic is a guy who we don't mm. talk much about, but he's going to be an NBA player in about a year or two. The first game against Houston when he took the shot, the fadeaway shot, baseline fadeaway for a game, and they ran the play for Mamchilovic, a freshman. You know, the, the, the trust that they have in that young man is special. Harry, before you go, King, if you get your ankles broke like that, what are you, are you, are you going to calm me? No, I'm saying if you get your ankles broke oh, like okay, that, okay, how, yeah, yeah. Like what, how, how do you feel? You just get up. It happens. It's part of it. It's, it's almost like getting dunked on. Right? You get dunked on. You get, Which you get... one is worse? I feel like getting broken ankles yeah. is a little worse. Because you booty to the ground. Like yeah, you're on the ground. Bro broken ankles might be Yeah, because right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. at least <laughs> if you get dunked on, you just got to, okay. Let's and then you have the slither of hope that he might, that he might a, miss. A, a, yeah. Yeah, right. so it bro broken ankles is worse. Yeah, yeah, okay. As long as you don't have a poor reaction, like uh, when Shaq dunked on Chris bad. Dudley. You can't get mad. Like, hey. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's hey, true. You, you can't get mad. Yeah, you, yeah. You, you, got, yeah, you got to get up and keep running. You got uh -huh. to keep playing. Right, right. Next play mentality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you get mad, then you just look. You look. You look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get mad. All right, Lyles, who do you have as the most reliable team? I got North Carolina. Okay. Again, mm. I, I, I still say, like, this feels like the recipe that they always have when they win a title. They've got the experienced guard. ACC player of the year who somehow also was not even I don't think on any of the uh, preseason all ACC teams yep. crazy uh, for RJ Davis obviously Armando Baycott 
Cormac Ryan, when he decides he wants to score 25, he can do it. Yeah. Um, and then I think that there's going to be a game or two where there is the Elliot Cadeau, the Seth Trimble game. Mm. I, I just this that's that's the makeup of this team. That is part of the recipe. Like one of the youngsters is going to have to come in yeah, yeah. and save you. And it, one of those guys at some point, watch, it's it's going to happen. <laughs> So I've got North Carolina. Yeah, North Carolina was so close in 2022. And they do so have something really to prove. Them to yeah, they do. Similarly yeah, to Houston, right. similarly to Purdue. Especially with Nate Hodge last season there. He's an old guy um, that obviously wants to win a championship before he leaves Chapel Hill. Okay, I have UConn as well. You said a million and one things. I do want to say, though, it is so interesting because Dan Earl, Dan Hurley is such an interesting coach. Mm. Like his personality, I, I talked to him when we went to UConn this season. It's just such a very – his players – are super tight with him in a way that I don't feel like I've seen with a lot of coaches. Mm -hmm. They have like a very close relationship, almost like a brother relationship rather than like a father relationship. And I feel like this team, the way that he coaches this team, um, yeah, I just feel like this UConn team is different. Hey, you gonna break the desk. It's, this big. is what I can't. We got up. pens, we got Sharpies, <laughs> right. we, got, we got it all today. Yeah, no, the Sharpie is the thing that's taking over the show. <laughs> um, okay, so what are we doing next? Balance. Okay, uh, the time has come to take our picks. Oh, sorry, we're doing the tournament challenge again. Sign up for ESPN's tournament challenge. Download the app to create your own bracket and compete in the number one men's bracket. You can create up to 25. Don't do 26. Get yours filled out before March 21st. Actually, you probably can do 26. You, you just have to account. use another Different email account, address. yeah, different email. You can do 50. Hustle. Don't do that. That's cheating. That's cheating. Okay. We, we don't condone that. And you're also now, not going to win doing 50. You'd have to make a billion brackets. More. Honestly, yeah. Probably to have a perfect Oh, one, yeah. yeah. Also, do people genuinely get upset when their bracket gets busted? Like, oh, my God, I am so shocked. The thing that is, like, you know, you get struck by lightning a thousand <laughs> times before you make a perfect bracket. I think it's not necessarily the bracket. I think it's their team that they have, like, this man, is the know, year. Man. It's, this it's, is the year we're going to win. It's a new world out here. Okay, let's, you know? uh, let's do our final four picks, starting with King McClure. Let's go. I'm going in the east. We are going UConn, obvious. In the West, I'm going North Carolina. Midwest, I'm going Tennessee. South, I'm going Kentucky. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> what are you talking about? Are you going to go out there and play defense? <laughs> <laughs> All they have to do is play 25% of defense. Okay. Just a little, I did, a little I did bit, say 25. A little bit more. Anyways. A little bit more than what they normally do. Yeah. And they Who final four winning the whole thing? UConn winning the whole thing. Okay. Lyles. I have Auburn, North Carolina, Houston, and Tennessee. And then I've got North Carolina versus Houston, mm -hmm. and I've got North Carolina winning it all. Did you say cute. Auburn? Yeah, cute. I, I really like that. I like the Auburn pick. I yeah, did. yeah. That's I just, did. Shout out to Janai Broom. Balance. Yep. They're better balanced. Sam Rabbit, who you got? <laughs> yeah, I'm going UConn, Arizona, uh, Kentucky as well. I like that picking. Yes. And I'm going to go Creighton. Uh, they made a I run like last that. year. I like that. I like that. They can shoot the lights out. Um, they're kind of, I, I don't want to say they're like UConn light, but – they do have a lot of the similarities that UConn mm -hmm. has um, with a seven-footer, a guy that can make threes as well. Can we – like, Kentucky has two lottery picks on their team with Dillingham and Shepard, and they both come off the bench. <laughs> like, hey, what man. are we doing? I, John Callum. <laughs> yeah, it's wrong. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Save it for tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Okay, what do you for got, my final four, I have UConn <laughs> – I'm going to the South next. Houston, Tennessee, and then finally we have the number five team that finished the regular season in the ACC at number five, <laughs> Clemson Why is that? University. Because, listen, Coach Brownell, whatever. Anyway. What? <laughs> Just Coach Brown out. <laughs> Anyways, I feel like this Houston team is going to win the whole thing because, you know, as you mentioned, they were playing in Hilton South. That yes. is one of the toughest places to play. When you're playing Iowa State yes. in a Big 12 championship, it might as well be a home team or a home it game was. for Iowa yes. State. Um, so I feel like Houston uh, got a little kick in the butt, realized mm -hmm. that they were not invincible, and I feel like they can go through the entire postseason. And they were also kind of banged out. up, too, to your point. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, any final thoughts when it comes to this bracket, guys? Don't be disappointed when it doesn't work out. <sighs> no. You know? Don't um, break your TV. This is supposed to be fun. Yeah, Enjoy. also, if you're filling out a CBI tournament bracket, Evansville Purple Aces. <laughs> CBI. <laughs> Same. Who, who fills out a CBI? I don't know. There's some, I'm certain there's somebody <laughs> looking through this lens. People that, do. That is, hey, man. All these parlays and stuff like that. Y'all be that, playing. I know somebody's filling out a CBI next bracket. Next we're doing our CBI bracketology show. <laughs> So you better have one filled out, King. Are you good? <laughs> Any final thoughts from you? 
He just hopes he gets his suitcase by the end of the day. Honestly, that's really, that's I, I, that's really all I'm focused on as soon as we leave this. Because I got to call United or American. Don't ever fly that again. <laughs> don't, don't, don't be disrespectful. I'm just saying. It's, that was the problem. Okay. <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you so much. Yes, Don't use Delta the Sharpie. Five. Our producer, Chloe, just told me in my ear. Yeah. Do not use the Sharpie, please, unless you're trying to kill everybody yeah. around you. Thank you guys for watching Bracketology presented by Coors Light. We will see you on this exact show next year. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hold your breath. <laughs> or you Sharpie. <laughs>